This week, we go one-on-one -on -one with veteran Steve Thomas. The NHLPA presents Be a Player, brought to you by EA Sports NHL 2004. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Welcome to Be a Player, I'm Brett Lindros, coming to you this week from Detroit, Michigan, where we'll profile Red Wings veteran Steve Thomas. Now in his 20th NHL season, Steve signed with the Wings back in October and has been a welcome addition here in Hockey Town. Also on the show, we'll profile Montreal Super Rookie Michael Ryder, we'll test your trivia knowledge, and we'll check out a brand new EA Sports Cyberstrader. But first, here's part one of our Be a Player profile with Steve Thomas. Break in! Oh. Scores! Thomas. What a great shot by Steve Thomas! It's 5-1! In terms of your coming to Detroit, was your objective to play close to home or to play for a contender? Well, I think most of all, I wanted to be um, closer to home. Uh, you know, I had an opportunity to go back to Anaheim, and I had a wonderful experience there. It was amazing going to the finals last year. And, uh, geez, I went a couple of months after training camp had started, and I still didn't have a job. And finally, Detroit called, and it was a no-brainer for me. Puts on the break, Thomas for the goal, scores! Steve Thomas, his first goal as a Red Wing, and this his first game. Detroit um, is a is a great mix of um, of veteran players that have all pretty much been very successful throughout their careers. Everyone on that team knows how to be successful, so it's not like they have to be pushed to do that. Uh, whereas uh, on other teams that I've been on. Uh, in the island, for instance, no one there had ever really won anything, and uh, they didn't know what it took to actually win championships. And this team really does. Let's uh, let's switch gears. When you were a kid, who were some of the teams and players you modeled your game after? Well, I watched Toronto Maple Leafs ever since I was five, six years old. Uh, you know, I was able to watch the first period. I had to run upstairs, put my pajamas on, come downstairs, be able to watch the first period. And if I was lucky, I got to see Peter Puck between periods. Just our family was Leaf fans all the way through, and I took kind of a shine to Daryl Sittler. I thought he was, uh, uh, you know, I was Daryl Sittler on the driveway, and if I was in net, I was Mike Palmentier. So, like we all were, I guess, at my age at the time. I guess a couple of things strike me when we first talk about your early years of Toronto. First of all, that you were never drafted. What do you attribute that to? I think my size had a little bit to do with it too. I think they're even dollies. back then, though. Yeah, I think so. I, um, maybe not so much as it is now, but um, size. Um, uh, you know, just the fact that I was overlooked when I was in a you know I was a late developer and overlooked as a as a 17, 18 year old, um, just made me work that much harder. I always had it in my in my heart that I was going to you know be successful in hockey, and it, it worked out. And, So you had three years you end up in Toronto, then actually uh, you asked for a trade. Yeah. I didn't really ask for a trade because I really didn't want to go anywhere, but uh, I'd just come off my third year, I scored 35 goals, and uh, uh, and I kind of, I guess I wanted a raise, to be honest with you. I was asking for 200 US. And uh, that was uh, in 87. I wish I didn't ask for that much money in retrospect, but uh, uh, as it turned out, um, you know, it was a good stepping stone for me to go, you know, to become the person I am today. Thomas, the shot, he scores! Let's talk about uh, when you get to Chicago. Uh, interesting, there's a few interesting characters on that team. Yeah. Uh, what was it like being a Hawk uh, back then? Well, they were a successful team back then. Uh, you know, they're, having, they're struggling now, but uh, they've got the same sort of a history as Toronto does, you know, on the original six team. Um, you know, I walk in the room, I see Dennis Savard, Steve Larimer, Doug Wilson. You look around, you see these guys, and you're like, wow, we have a real good team here. A lot along the same lines is what I'm seeing right now. Looking around, dropping Wilson, shot, You were dealt from the Chicago Blackhawks to the New York Islanders. Um, was that a frustrating time for you? Yeah, it really was. Mostly because I didn't understand why I was moved. Um, you know, I'd come off a pretty successful year and scoring 40-odd goals. and. Uh, to go to the island, um, I stayed at that Marriott right across the street from the Coliseum, and I'm sitting there, lying there in bed, thinking, where am I? You know, there's nothing around there to do, and it was just, uh, 
in retrospect, it turned out to be one of the, the best moves that um, someone's made in my, you know, my career uh, in moving me there because I've had my most successful years there. Hit by Thomas, and it's 2-1 Islander. It's now time for Be A Player Trivia. To play, send your answer to NHLPA.com slash Be A Player. All correct answers will be entered in a random draw with a chance to win an NHL 2004 game courtesy of EA Sports. All other correct responses will be entered for a chance to win an autographed NHLPA jersey. For complete contest rules, visit NHLPA.com and click on Be A Player. When was the last time a Canadian-based team was in the Stanley Cup Finals? More from Detroit and Steve Thomas when we return. For three years I had, you know, I totally enjoyed myself playing hockey in Toronto again. Welcome back. I'm here at Comerica Park, home to Major League Baseball's Detroit Tigers. While the Red Wings are consistently among the league's best season after season, the Tigers, on the other hand, are among the league's worst. Last season, they nearly set a record for futility, but are hoping to turn things around with the signing of last season's World Series MVP, Pudge Rodriguez. The Red Wings, however, are hoping that Steve Thomas can bring them their fourth Stanley Cup in eight seasons. Here's more with Steve Thomas on our Be A Player profile. Let's get it to him, he scores! Cleared out, turns on center, behind Thomas White, walks right in, there's his third, the hat trick. Nice move by Steve. When you were in New York, things really seemed to click for you. Why do you think that was? Just the opportunity um, to, to be uh, one of the go-to guys on that team. I was uh, given an opportunity to play with Pierre Turgeon, uh, Derek King, and we were given the responsibility of being the line that determine outcomes in games, and I loved that opportunity. What memories do you have of the New York Islanders' 1993 playoff Stanley Cup run? We won our first series against Washington, uh, I think it was in seven games, and we're going up against the two-time defending Stanley Cup champs, the Pittsburgh Penguins, with Mario and Yager and all the guys. We were so close and we played so well together, we were able to beat them in seven games in overtime. After that game, it was like we won the Stanley Cup. We forgot we were only halfway there. <laughs> and then the next series, we had to go up against the Montreal Canadiens, who beat us in five or six games, but uh, eventually went on to win the Cup that year. But it was a great experience. That whole year was just a great experience. Terjean, Thomas cutting to the net, tries to get it to him, he scores! Terjean to Thomas, the Islanders! 93-94, when he scored 42 with Terj. What was it like back then? I mean, I think it was 93, he scored 58 goals and had 130 some odd points. Won the Lady Bing that year, and uh, he was one of the top centermen in the league, without a doubt. The three guys we had on that line each complemented each other and we worked together really well. And, and Al Arbor was just incredible. You know, he's won so many Stanley Cups. You know, he was like our, our grandpa, you know, behind the bench and with all the young players that we had and he steered us in the right direction. Let's talk about coming back to Toronto for your second stint there. It seemed like a great move going back to Toronto. I, I just assumed that you were going to stay there. Yeah, it was a great opportunity to come back. I mean, I really miss being at home. It was a team that was on the upswing uh, at the time, and then Pat Quinn came in, same year that they signed me. And uh, Pat turned the team from a real um, trap, uh, defensive style game into a, like a free flowing, uh, do what you wanted to do, be creative, uh, and, and we were successful doing that. And uh, for three years I had, you know, I totally enjoyed myself playing hockey in Toronto again. Uh, just the media coverage and the hoopla and everything that goes on with hockey in Toronto is overwhelming. Um, but going into it, I thought to myself, you know, if, if I'm not being successful, then I'm going to get criticism from a lot of media personalities, from, from fans, that sort of thing. So that kind of drove me to do the best I could every night that I was there. And uh, I enjoyed every second of it. Tell me about the circumstances surrounding your departure from Toronto. Uh, I came off an eight goal season. I, I didn't have a very good year uh, in the regular season, but in the playoffs I scored six goals. And I did that for three years in a row that we were in the playoffs. 
and I don't know whether you know it was Pat Quinn, whether it was Bill Waters making the decisions. I, I, I to this day, I don't know why. To be honest with you, I don't. And that first year I was in Chicago, I was being put in a role where I could be one of those go-to guys again. And then I got hurt, and then I finished the season. Then the next year, uh, it was just pulling my hair out, frustration, and knowing that if you put me in a different role, I could make a lot more happen for you. And that's what frustrated me more than anything. And then at the deadline, I was moved to, uh, to Anaheim. And then we went to the finals. I mean, I could look back on a whole Chicago experience and say, thank you very much, but uh, probably better off where I am. Time now for Cyber Strader, brought to you by EA Sports 2004. This week, it's the animated plays of Steve Thomas. Be a Player gives you a chance to ask your favorite NHL player a question. For your chance to participate, visit NHLPA.com. Jason from Point Claire, Quebec, asked Matt Sundin, what is your favorite music to listen to in the dressing room before a game? Here's Matt with his reply. Thanks for the question about the dressing room. Uh, when we get ready for a game, we'll listen to Outkast. Brian McCabe is responsible for that. Coming up, rookie sensation Michael Ryder. Didn't like my job too much going up, but that after I realized my history and be a good spot to play. Time now for the Be a Player UMusic.ca Hit Zone, featuring the plays of Steve Thomas and Michael Ryder, set to Jason McCoy and Still from the album Sins, Lies, and Angels. Today. Keeping with our sports theme, I'm now outside of one of the NFL's newest and nicest stadiums, Ford Field. Ford Field opened a wide acclaim in 2002 and is the home of the Detroit Lions. It boasts luxury boxes and seats over 65,000 people. Ford Field will also play host to Super Bowl XL in 2006. Super is also a word to describe the season Montreal Canadiens rookie Michael Ryder is having. The pride of Bonavista, Newfoundland is having a breakout year and could land NHL Rookie of the Year honours. Here's Michael Ryder on Next Generation. Scramble right around the Vancouver net, and Ryder scores. I think of all every kid dreams about playing in the NHL one day. When I was young, I, I was dreamt about it. My parents asked me what I wanted to do, and I was like, I want to be a hockey player. And they're like, well, not many players make it there. I'm like, oh, I know, but it's just what I want to do. The language barrier was a little different. Just coming in to a French place and I not knowing any French at all and but it wasn't too bad in Hall because like it was a lot of bilingual people and my builds were great, they helped me out and, and got homesick a little bit at first so uh, after my first year I think uh, I think I adjusted pretty well. I went to the draft actually because I was ranked to go on 63rd or 64 or something and then uh, just sitting there for th three or five hours and not hearing your name was a little disappointing but then my name finally got called in 216 in the eighth round. And so and then I heard it was by Montreal. And first I wasn't, I don't like Montreal. I didn't like Montreal too much growing up. But uh, after I realized a lot of history and it would be a good spot to play. Back down the ice. That's Rebound, score. Ryder gets his first. 
My goal this year was just to come in and try and uh, get like three or four exhibition games in and uh, just try and prove myself at this level. And just want to go out and just show what I can do. And I, I think I've played like seven games, seven or eight games, and uh, just then the season started and they still never told me to get a place or whatever. I was just there and I just wanted to keep working hard. And then finally they said, yeah, you can look for a place. And uh, it's a big uh, weight off your shoulders. Never, never many rookies get to play on the first line with Saki Kaibu and uh, Yambu. If somebody told me that this year, I would, I'd be, I'd say, you'd be, I'd be kidding me. It's kind of hard not to think about it when like everybody's talking about it, like every day. They're like, oh, call it a trophy, you get a good shot. But I just try not to think about it as much as I can. I just try and block it out, and just try and keep going out playing the same way I, I do. Be a player trivia is brought to you by EA Sports NHL 2004. If it's in the game, it's in the game. When was the last time a Canadian-based team was in the Stanley Cup Finals? Who was it and when was it? Uh, Edmonton. No, no, Montreal, I'm sorry. It's Montreal. Montreal versus LA in, that's not it? No. The Canadians, when they won it or no? No. Not a bad guess, that was 93. Who and when? Montreal. No. Close. It was actually uh, a year later. I was in Montreal right for that game. You should be embarrassed right now. Was okay, wasn't there. Montreal. It was uh, not Montreal. <laughs> Vancouver, 94. Donnie won, Jordan. Oh, took you right Look at the surprise. Nicely done. Give the game of the year, that's why. There you go. <laughs> uh, Montreal, wasn't it? Yeah. Us, 94. Yeah, <laughs> Bernie! Got the, we got the hamster running there. You know, right? It took a little while, but it got going. <laughs> Thank you. Centerman, here's Cardinal, score! Cardinal made the pass to Trevor Linden. Coming up, more with Stumpy Thomas. When guys on your bench see a 40-year-old guy out there duking it out with someone, I think that brings a bit of a spark to them. Be a player, sponsored by EA Sports NHL 2004. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Here now with Detroit Red Wing captain Steve Eisenman. Steve, I just want to ask you a couple questions about Steve Thomas and what you think he brings to the table as a player. Well, his style of play is something our team uh, that could really benefit us. More of a straight ahead guy who uh, plays the body, a good four checker. Um, and he really complements any line. He can play uh, on a line with a player like Pavel Datsuk uh, and, and be a, a good finisher. Or they, you know, they can put him on a line with, say, Darren McCarty and, and, and a line that has to go out and you know, play with a lot of energy and be real physical. So he's fit in very well. Now tell me about the role your family's played in welcoming uh, Steve here to Detroit. Well, uh, you know, it, it worked out great. Our wives are good friends. Our daughters are, are, are good friends. And so we, when he came to Detroit, he needed a place to stay. So we gladly take him in. He's, uh, become the Cato Kalen of the NHL. <laughs> My dog hasn't walked the same ever since he moved in. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Steve. Here's now more with Steve Thomas on our Be A Player profile. Last season at the trade deadline, you were dealt from Chicago to Anaheim. Tell me how that all came about. I got a funny story to tell you about that day. Um, uh, Mike Smith called me in the office about a week prior to the deadline and said, you know, if our team continues the way we're going right now, um, we're going to move you to a different team. So uh, the day of the deadline comes around and we have a flight to Anaheim to go out west. And, uh, and I'm thinking, wouldn't they have told me before I got on the plane to go out west if I'm going to somewhere out east, as it turns out. So we, we finally land in Anaheim and everyone's cell phone opens and they've got messages coming out of the ying, you know, because of the deadline. Everyone wants to know where everyone went. So Steve Sullivan was sitting in front of me and he gets his phone out and he says, you just got traded to Anaheim. I'm like, wow, I didn't expect that one bit. I thought it'd be, you know, in Ottawa or uh, somewhere in the east. Bus pulls in, we all get out, I shake everyone's hand. They walk in the visiting room. We, I walk into the, uh, the Ducks room and we played against each other the following night. And uh, it turns out I got two goals and assists that game. And that was the whole start of it. Steve Thomas scores his second of the game. Terrible. Talk about the resurgence of your game when you were playing with Anaheim. Well, I just got a chance to play. And in, in Chicago, I didn't get that chance. And it drove me crazy. 
they showed a lot of confidence in me. They gave me an opportunity to be on the power play and, and play, uh, you know, on that, in that third line situation. And it just totally worked out. It was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. When you arrived in Anaheim, did you think that the Ducks were actually a team that could go to the Stanley Cup Finals? I think we only lost two games the whole time I was there. And uh, if you have a goaltender that's going to stop the puck for you, you're going to go a long way in the playoffs. And uh, I think that's the number one reason why we were successful was because of him. But to look around the room, you got Paul Correa, um, Adam Oates, um, uh, Keith Carney, who was a rock for us back there. Uh, a bunch of guys that worked hard and had no airs about them. No one thought they were any bigger than anybody else on that team. And that's, I think, one of the big reasons why we, you know, we were successful. What are some of the aspects you enjoy about being a Red Wing? Well, I mean, when you slip that jersey on, there's a lot of history there. I, re I remember playing against them many, many times throughout my career and, and just seeing them in the finals and winning Stanley Cups. I think when you put that jersey on and you step on the ice, the other team knows that they're playing against the Red Wings. And uh, that's a nice feeling to have when you, uh, when you know that their other team's got to bring their A game to beat you. On the other side of the coin, it's not like we can throw our sticks and skates out there and be successful every night. Um, I mean, if you look at some of the work ethic, everyone down the line puts a tremendous effort in every night. And that's their professionalism coming out and knowing how to win hockey games and win championships. Oh, yeah. Scores! What a what? great Thomas to Mowers to Hall. What do you feel your role is on this team? My role on this team is to add some energy when it's necessary out there. I like to get a body check in and spark our bench, that sort of thing. and Put a few goals in uh, at timely moments. Get into a fight every now and then. I think uh, when guys on your bench see a 40-year-old guy out there duking it out with someone, I think that brings a bit of a spark to them. Back when you first came in with the Leafs, when you were 21-22, did you ever think for one second that you'd be playing professional hockey at the age of 40 years old? To play 20 years and uh, you know not be drafted, uh, people not putting a lot of stock in me when I was young, just being able to know that I proved a lot of people wrong. You know, obviously you go through your ups and downs, you have your injuries and that sort of thing, but it just makes you stronger as a person, uh, mentally and physically, when when you've gone through all that. And I'm glad that I have. That suit, nice move from his knees. Thomas in, oh. scores. Good. Well, that wraps up another episode of Be a Player. I'd like to thank Steve Thomas for joining us this week. Make sure you catch next week's show as I'm off to Anaheim to hook up with former Red Wing superstar Sergei Fedorov, the first Russian-born player to reach 1,000 points. It should be lots of fun. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Brett Lindros' is clothing supplied by The Coop, clothing for men, Toronto. NHLPA.com is your source for the latest stats, scores, and NHL player information. Click on Be a Player for the latest show information or to send us your questions and comments. You'll find it all at NHLPA.com. I'd be able to watch the first period, and if I was lucky, I got to see Peter Puck between periods. Um, not to mention the fact that I had to go pour my dad a beer before the game started. <laughs> Seven years old. <laughs>